Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part 17 in a series of short videos all about the metalworking lathe. In this episode of this instalment, I'm going to discuss tailstock alignment, how to add tailstock align with a headstock so you can do parallel turning. Um, I did a taper turning video the other week in the lathe. They're still set up for taper turning, so I've got to get the tailstock aligned, and now's a good time to do a little bit of video. That's enough talking, we'll bring the camera in and see if we can get things straightened up. This is looking straight down at the centres on the lathe and you can see it's a mile across the one side because we're doing a taper turning job with it. So we've got to move it back into line with that front centre. There's actually a scry mark on here which lines up with a scry mark when it is lined up and that gets you reasonably accurate but not accurate enough. It's adjustable by two cuphead bolts, one that side and one that side, which push against a central position. And this moves back and forward on some dovetails. The big clamp handle is the thing that stops it moving. So obviously it's a mile this way because we were doing some taper turning, so it needs to go across that way. So to make it go across that way, we loosen this one off. quite a long way and we'll tighten this one up and that pushes the tail stock away from me back into position so once they're lined up that gets you roughly in the ballpark and then we can do some measurement to make sure that it is absolutely right right so that is very near, or as near as like an eyeball, a little touch more I think. Right, that looks good. To get a little bit more accurate, put a steel rule in there. And if you push a steel rule gently with the tail stock, you can see it's at an angle, so we need to come slightly more this way to straighten it up. Try it again. I still did an angle. Right, we're going the wrong way because it's getting worse. Right, we'll try it again. Very slightly towards me, it needs to come. That's not bad. Very, very slightly more. Mate, right, that's pretty good. If anything, we've gone too far this way. We'll put a dead gauge on right now, and so we can get it a little bit more accurate than that. I've got a piece of ground bar here, I'm not quite sure it was off, I got one or two given. Um, it's got really accurate centres on both ends and I'm going to use this as a test piece. So we'll put it into that centre and then bring a tailstock centre in. Just a little nip on it. Touch a dial gauge onto it and we'll set a zero. And you know, if I revolve that it doesn't move, it's showing dead zero because that centre was turned in this lathe, there's nothing else but in line. Up with the tailstock end. Right, we need to move these allen keys now to get that to zero. Wrong way. Try it again. We'll set a zero. Right, that's pretty good. This is the final method I use to line things up. I've got a bit of mail seal bar here 
It's been centre drilled in both ends. I'm going to mount it between centres. That's going to go in there. Now I'm not going to use a live centre at this end. I'm going to use a dead centre. That is a centre that doesn't rotate uh, just to remove any inaccuracy at all from the lathe centre. It's only a little bit of high temperature grease in the end of there. This is the way it was done before they had all these cheap imported live centres. Right, just a little nip to consolidate things and then I'm just going to put some tape on there to stop it rattling about. All it takes. I'm not intending going in reverse, so this will be all right. Right, so we've got that motor between centres. We're not concerned about this part because that was machined in a chuck. What we're going to do is take a light cut off there and don't adjust the tool and take a light cut off there and then measure the difference between both ends. And that is a really accurate way of setting it up. So that journal and that journal need to be made out at the same size. So rather than that, you just get a little, little bit of vibration. That's better. I'm going to work for a minute or two just to let this tailstock centre wear in. Right, I'm going to take a light cut, a light cut from this end. Doesn't matter what size this is, as long as it's the same size as both ends. Don't be this end. Right, so we need to measure those two ends and both they are going to be the same size. Right, it's point two bigger at this end, so we need to bring this towards me and do it again. Keep on doing the, the same test. Right, we'll take another light cut, making sure that centre's alright. Watching for excess heat, bastard, clumsy twat. Right, the light cut from this end again. Doesn't need much, just enough to remove a little bit of metal. And you can keep this tool and use it over and over again. Right, once again, measuring time. That's dead nuts on there. Perhaps.
I'll do it with an imperial micrometer. Funny when I start getting down to flowers, I like me imperial micrometer. Yes. Perhaps a couple of tenths smaller at this end. Let's see if I can tweak it just a little bit. That's absolutely dead on. There's one more check we can do. And I've touched the clock gauge off on there. Obviously it's running dead wrong because I've just machined it. And if I went that into a zero, which is there, and take it to the other end of the bar. Absolutely dead on zero there as well. Of course that's wrong as well. I mentioned that you can take things out between centres and put them back in where you can't with a chuck without having to set it up again. If you take it out, go away and do something with it, put it back in again. There you are, running exactly the same, exactly the same place. So turning between centres is used quite a lot, especially offset turn for the likes of crankshafts. But this is one good way if making sure your lathe's running through, a longer bar would give it even more accuracy. But when you're turning a long part, just measure it in two or three places. It'll tell you straight away if your lathe is turning through. I hope you enjoyed this short video on a very, very important subject. Uh, it's amazing how many people don't actually bother to check the line up of that tailstock and they wonder why they end up turning taper parts. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit from it. Anything you like us to cover, all you've got to do is send us an email. That's my email up there. Anyway, thanks for watching.